on to this now. The current chaos in the House of Representatives would never have happened on Nancy Pelosi's watch, in my opinion. Thank you. Nancy's daughter, filmmaker Alexandra Pelosi, is here to weigh in on that very topic and to tell us all about her explosive new documentary, The Insurrectionist Next Door. Please welcome Alexandra Pelosi. <laughs> so, we have, I have to start by... Your mother w would have figured out what to do she, if she were in, in the Republican Party, <laughs> which she's not. <laughs> but I think she would have not allowed... She would not have allowed this chaos to continue. Now, why is that? What do you think she would have done with this situation? With the speakership, yeah. Oh, jeez. Wow. <laughs> OK, it's Feel Good Friday, so I'm going to try and be on my best behavior today. All, All right. right. Try not to get myself canceled. <laughs> um, I think that the reason that the House is a mess yeah. is because the country is a mess. I think we're all so divided, right? Yeah. Right. I, I'll say this in love. We have some responsibility, all of us. I mean, right nearby in the New York 8th or 3rd Congressional District, a majority of those people elected George Santos to be their representative. Now, was that a good idea? Does anybody at this table but, think... But he did that lie that... to them. We didn't he know did how bad he was. They That's didn't know true. it. I didn't vote for him. All right, so if you yeah. think I'm just going to crap on the Republican, I'll go the other way. Sorry, your friend over in New Jersey. <laughs> the state of New Jersey elected Bob Menendez to be their senator. Does anybody in this table, anybody in this room think that Bob Menendez is the best representative? I'm sorry, I know he's your friend. I know he's done good things for... But the point is... Come on, we can do better than that. Yeah. The people elected these people to represent yeah, but them. We've always had losers, and your mother seemed to be able to herd her cats. Why? Yeah, she's her cats, but the Republican conference is a bunch of brats. <laughs> There's a big difference between yeah. who is being elected. And into members. I was, I was going to say that they're not cats, they're something else, but I would get canceled. Oh, but, yeah. um, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> Listen, at the rate Republicans are going, your mother might end up speaker again because they're <laughs> running out of who else to run. Sonny, you have, have a question. Anybody to run. Yes. Um, last week, your mom, I, this, I don't know why this ticked me off so much, but it did, when she was ordered by the interim speaker, McHenry, because now Kevin McCarthy had been kicked out, to vacate her office in the Capitol building, mm -hmm. which is really without precedent. Um, who do you think was behind that little decision? And do you think this was retaliation for Democrats siding against McCarthy in voting to vacate the speaking sh speaker's chair? Okay, first of all, this is such juvenile petty. I, I'm not it enjoying this. Petty, for the record, I'm not enjoying any of this. Like, watching the House self-destruct is not yeah. something I'm taking great pride in. But, you know, when you become speaker, you get this map. The architect of the Capitol comes to you with a map, and they say, there are hundreds of little peek hideaway offices. That, there's plenty of room for everybody to have a hideaway office in the Capitol. Okay. So this... So there were other rooms available? There are plenty of rooms available. I went on that tour when she became speaker the first time. I took my kids on the tour. There are everybody, Republicans and Democrats, despite, regardless of who's in charge, they all have access to these special hideaway offices. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of places they could have put Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. But yes, they had to do this to just be like, you know, junior high slight. Yeah. It's all very um, childish. Yes. And it makes... Also, it just makes America look pathetic. Yeah. Right? Don't I you know. think? No, yeah, they're looking at us. At a time when things are so serious all yeah. over the world. Right, yeah. We actually need a government. Like, yeah. they're real. We do. Right now, is a, it's a really, obviously, dangerous time. Mm -hmm. And it's really heartbreaking, the conversation you were having before. Wait a minute, it's Feel Good Friday. What else do you want to <laughs> yeah. talk about? Let's go up and we're not down. trying to feel good, but the yeah. world's not helping. Yeah. Well, Alexandra, I want to ask you, um, I think I, a lot of us commended your mom for uh, stepping aside as speaker and passing the baton of leadership, but there's still this big national conversation about the age of politicians and when is it time to not run again. I want to give you a chance to respond. She's obviously, we all agree, she's a force of nature. Um, when, is, when do you think it's time for her to actually step aside? Because she did announce she's running for Congress. All right, look. I get I it. another one to There we go. <laughs> We're going to be... I'm not ageist about this. I think we have... Term limits. They're called elections. Mm -hmm. If you don't like Nancy Pelosi, you have every right to vote her out of office. If you don't like Mitch McConnell, you have every right to vote him out of office. Mm -hmm. You know what I say to all those old people? I get it. Joe Biden's not your dream date. I get it. But you know what I say to Joe Biden? Thank you. Who would want that job? I don't yeah. Seriously. <laughs> I, I don't want it. I agree with that. I don't want that job. And, uh, yeah, Aren't you, don't you, know, you feel good that he's in charge right now with all this turmoil? He's a level-headed, intelligent, empathic man. I feel better. I mean, the point we're making is... I mean, thank you, Jesus. 
Well, there is something called experience. And the one thing we're seeing in the Republican conference is zero experience. They have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. So I'm pro-experience. <laughs> that's, all, that's all. I like people that know what they're doing. Well, Alexandra, I want to talk to you about your documentary. The oh, thank you. Finally. <laughs> yeah. That's what I came for. Friday, the Insurrectionist de Next Door. You were filming with your mom at the Capitol on January 6th, which yeah. we've spoken about here, when she was escorted out of the Congress uh, during the assault. Is that why you decided to make this subject your next documentary? Finally, let's talk about me. <laughs> OK, so January 6th, I was in the Capitol with my teenage yeah. sons. Oh. We saw. <laughs> My sons were the first to call it. My teenage son was the first to call it. He said, what if they break into the building? He knew it was coming. Yeah. So I saw those people from the window. I got to see them, almost like I got to see right there. Yeah. I got to see them. And I was always sort of curious, who are these people? Why did they come? They all came, you know, hang Mike Pence. We should have hung Nancy Pelosi from a lamppost. And then after, there were all these people that said these things like, oh, I'm so disappointed. Mom texted her daughter. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I didn't get to put a bullet in Nancy Pelosi's brain. So I was really curious about who did who that? these people. There's yeah. a woman who, I mean, there's been, these people have all been going through the courts now. And I was really curious about who these people are because I, you know, I'm still, I think of it as like my, my mom thinks that this is just like my therapy. This is my coping mechanism is that I have to go talk to them. She said, why would you want to talk to these people? Well, because you I know margaritas are a I'm, lot, a lot easier. <laughs> I just am looking for answers. I'm just curious. Yeah, and understand. And, and what led them there yeah. and what was so broken in their lives. Well, that who they do would... you think led them there? Well, hello. Yeah. Well, but what's why it's so interesting to me is that he's still roaming the streets as a free man, at least to this day. Not and all these other people have gone to jail, six, yeah. eight. A little guy goes to get yeah, in jail. This is a little guy. Now, for the record, I talked to American citizens that were charged with misdemeanors. Yeah. These are people that walked into the building. They didn't break anything. They didn't, you know, I walked back into the building on January. I know you want me to stop. I have, no, I have to go. I'm going to keep you here. Though. Okay, yeah, go. We'll be back with more.